What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Arc Survival Ascended for the best FPS possible. This video is not going to cover Windows at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, as well as an NVIDIA optimization guide and anything else that may help you. Just keep in mind, this game literally just released a few days ago. There's tons of optimization yet to be done and improvements. There's a bunch of tips in this that will carry across to a more updated version in the future. Without further ado, let's begin. First of all, in Steam, I'll search for Survival Ascended and right click it, then choose Properties. Inside of here, on the General tab, scrolling down to Launch Options, all we need to do is copy and paste the launch argument from the description down below, hyphen, use all available cores, one word, all caps, no spaces. Just like that, we should get an immediate performance boost. There are more command line arguments you can use from the previous generations of Arc. Most of them will likely not work, but if you have a config in another Arc game, it may be worthwhile copying it and pasting it in there too. Let's fire up the actual game itself to get customizing the in-game options. I'll create a game, randomizing and jumping in anywhere. And there we go. Now, performance is obviously struggling. I'm playing at 2K on a 3080 Ti, and with default settings, I'm sitting at a solid 35 FPS, which is uh, terrible. Looking around very quickly, things are blurry and blocky, and things look pretty weird, especially fast-moving objects, but we'll be getting to all of that and improving our FPS a ton. For the most part, you'll be lowering a lot of settings to get much better FPS, but there are console commands that give you a huge FPS boost with very little impact on game play, etc. Open console using the tilde button and you should see a bar at the very bottom where you can type. I'll climb somewhere where I can't be attacked and we'll sit somewhere up here. Okay, so I'm opening the console. What are the commands? Well, the first one, which you'll find all of these in the description down below, are dot volumetric cloud space zero. Doing this, if we look up, hitting enter, you'll see the volumetric cloud system is disabled. This takes us pretty much immediately and gains us 10 to 20 FPS, which is huge. If you want to know what kind of performance you're getting and you have it on Steam, hit shift tab, then options at the very bottom or settings, followed by in-game, then in-game FPS counter should be turned to top left or any corner of the screen anything but off, then FPS counter high contrast color, enable this, and it'll be bright green in the top left. You can, of course, use a third party bit of software such as MSI Afterburner and River Tuner. That'll give you a much more detailed information block. This I'll keep on for the rest of the video up until we get to the specific options. Anyways, the next console command is R dot followed by a volumetric once again, this time fog. Hit space and zero. This time you'll notice the tree line becomes infinitely more visible and our FPS should jump higher quite a bit once again. The only place that this doesn't really make sense is the snow biome as having fog around there makes it a lot more cold feeling compared to everywhere else. Everywhere else it actually raises the visibility and makes the game look quite a lot better. Then another command we can use is R dot water capital W dot single layer dot reflection space zero. If we do this, you'll notice that the water degrades in quality quite a bit, but it can boost your FPS if this is causing you to struggle, especially when you're around large bodies of water. It does make the water look quite a bit flatter compared to one, as you can see, but disabling quite a few reflections can boost your FPS, especially on lower end hardware. And for the most part, that's really it. These simple commands can help you get quite a bit of FPS. But now now that we're done with this extra tips section, we'll pause the game, head into settings, and we'll start on the video tab. For the most part, you'll be lowering most of your options here, to be honest. Resolution should match your display. If it's 2K, set it to 2K, etc. If you're running a 4K monitor or a 2K monitor and you're struggling, it may be worthwhile clicking down one, for example, from 2K, which is 2560 by 1440, go down to 1920 by 1080 full HD. If you're running a 4K monitor, go down to 2K, which is 2560 by 1440, and you should notice a huge improvement in FPS. You can also enter a custom resolution here by choosing custom. Then windowed mode should be full screen for the best possible FPS. Then graphics presets. I'd recommend setting this based on your system. If you have a high end system, choose high, medium or low, etc. With any one of these options, make sure you set your resolution scale to 100%. We'll get to optimizing this a bit further on if you have an Nvidia graphics card. If you don't have an Nvidia graphics card and you're not able to use the RTX tab here for DLSS, you'll need to lower your resolution scale here to maybe 80% or possibly even lower. As for the rest of these options here on the left, 
I'd recommend setting advanced graphics to medium anti-aliasing as low as possible, view distance to low, textures you can leave it high or epic if you're playing at 4K, otherwise you can lower this. This is mainly going to have an impact on VRAM. If you have anything over 6 gigs, you should be able to choose high or maybe even epic. If you have 4 gigs or more VRAM, choose medium. Anything lower than that, choose low. Choose epic pretty much only if you're running in 4K. Post processing, set this to medium, general shadows, you can leave on high, illumination quality can be high or epic there's not a huge difference here effects quality you can lower this to medium and finally foliage quality i'd recommend dropping to medium pretty much at highest as this will have a huge impact on your fps then scrolling up on the right hand side untick max frame rate and when you do that you should be able to achieve more than 60 fps or whatever's capped here if you're trying to record with something like obs studio stream and your streams or recordings are lagging enable this and lock the fps to slightly lower than what you're getting in game. This way, some of your PC is left over for streams and other programs on your system, especially videos and things like that if you're trying to watch YouTube. Videos aren't playing at all or they're just pausing. This is something you may want to try. For me though, I'll untick this. Then motion blur, I'd recommend disabling, though having motion blur enabled can help hide frame stuttering and super low frame rates. This is your preference. For the rest of these, you'd probably want to turn them off, except for maybe light bloom and light shafts. These do make the game look quite a bit better. I'll save these settings and cap my FPS as I think the recording's lagging a bit. Should be a bit better. Light bloom and light shafts should both be enabled for a better looking game. Low light enhancement you can disable. Foliage and fluid interaction disable. These ones you can comfortably drag all the way down to the bottom here. Enable footstep particles and decals you can turn off. Disable H a lot. Not entirely sure what that does. Leave it off. And everything else here is probably fine. With these settings, save them. And you should notice a huge boost in performance though you will need to go to the main menu and reload the map for some of these to take effect. I'll disable the max frame rate cap once more and head across to the RTX tab here. If you have an NVIDIA graphics card, turn this on. Then super resolution, set this to quality, otherwise you can push it more to the performance end for more FPS. DLAA keeps your resolution scale at 100% and only really uses AI to improve the image further. I'd recommend quality, which should give you a boost in FPS. And finally, NVIDIA reflex low latency, turn this on if you have an NVIDIA graphics card. I'll save this, and for the most part, your FPS should be improved. There's not much else in here that we can change that'll gain us more FPS, other than on the camera tab, you can change your camera field of view to whatever you'd like. The higher it is, the more CPU it'll use, and the lower FPS you should be getting, but it really doesn't matter, it's about your experience. Camera shake, I'd recommend setting all the way down to zero, and probably camera bob as well. These are your preference, but personally, camera shake, camera view bob, and on the video tab, motion blur, which is up here should all be turned off if you struggle with motion sickness. Having all of these turned off should give you a slightly better experience. And that's pretty much it in these option settings. I'll save, head back, and resume, and you can see how FPS is still pretty much where it was. The game looks infinitely better, especially with fast moving objects such as this bird over here. It's no longer weirdly blurry. DLSS for some reason was pushed up to a much higher effective setting, causing weird artifacting in auto mode, but setting it to quality actually kept us somewhere around the same FPS and gives us pretty good visuals. I'll save and quit here. So save and exit to main menu, then we'll reload into the game and see what performance we're getting. Then another quick note, if you have an RTX 40 series NVIDIA graphics card and you see this area here, enable hardware accelerated GPU scheduling in Windows to enable frame generation, you'll need to enable hardware acceleration before you can choose this option here. I'd highly recommend enabling frame generation if you have a 40 series graphics card or another supported graphics card that has frame generation. This will greatly improve your FPS and change how the game looks as it comes to smoothness, but it won't really improve input latency if you're really struggling with FPS it generates more frames in between actual frames smoothing out how the game looks but not necessarily how it feels if you're getting really bad input latency as is. It's definitely worthwhile enabling though as it improves the experience even slightly. If you see this error here you'll need to close the game entirely after saving it hit start and type in graphics then open graphics settings. It'll be similarly placed in Windows 10 and 11. If you're on Windows 11 you'll see the display tab in system here, simply scroll all the way down and choose graphics at the very bottom. Now you should be on the same place as Windows 10 users. On this page here, click change default graphics settings. On Windows 10, I think it's advanced options or something along those lines. You're looking for hardware accelerated GPU scheduling at the very top. Enable this and you'll need to reboot your PC in order for this to work. 
And when you do so, you should be able to enable frame generation. On top of this, having this option enabled should give you an FPS boost in some games, while in others it could cause FPS drops. It's a weird option that mostly has good effects when it's enabled, but for certain games it doesn't help. Anyways, if you're playing Ark Survival Ascended mainly, or at least nowadays, this is a good option to enable for better FPS across the board or better feeling across the board, especially if you have frame generation available to you that you can use. So create a resume, single player, and there we go. Right, now that we're back in game, performance is further improved. We're now setting a solid 60 and 2K, which is pretty good. There is a huge improvement from a really laggy, sluggish 40 or even less to a solid 60, so that's good. This game is now playable, at least on a 3080 Ti at 2K. If you're playing on a 3070 or 3060 or 20 of those series, 40 or whatever, you should be able to play this at 1080p. If you're struggling, escape, settings, video, and drop the resolution to 1080p at most if you're playing on higher resolution displays. If you're playing at 1080p and still really struggling, maybe consider dropping it to 1600 by I think it's 900 or was it 1200? I think it's 900. That should give you a boost in performance for only a minimal quality of loss. Anything lower than that will really be noticeable. And that's pretty much it for the in-game optimization. If you scroll through the internet for more arguments that you can place in the console, you could probably boost your FPS quite a bit further. Though personally, the game doesn't really look all that bad. It actually looks pretty good. And at a solid 60, this is more than playable for me. So this is probably where I'd stop with my optimization. In the description down below, you'll find even more commands that you can try using, such as R Lumen Diffuse Indirect Allow Zero, which actually lowers the quality of quite a bit, to be honest. You can see lighting has changed quite dramatically, but it could boost your FPS. I'll change it back to one and you can see the change that it made here. If you're someone really struggling for FPS, this is something to try to change. Then SG dot foliage quality, I'll set this down to zero. And you may notice a boost in performance. I haven't seen too much of a change here, so I'm not sure if that really did anything. The option is here though. Then grass dot enable zero. This is supposed to boost your FPS though. I don't notice too much of a difference. I think you need to reload the map in order to see the difference. Oh no, there we go. Turning it to zero, the grass seemed to disappear. Yeah, no, it definitely disappears. It just takes some time. Then R dot shadow dot virtual dot enable and set this to zero as well for further performance r distance field shadowing zero r shadow virtual enable zero r distance field shadowing one enables quite a few shadows and setting this to zero disables pretty much all shadows though this looks a little bit weird to be honest one is probably better here r shadow csm max cascades one r material quality level one and finally r dot mip map LOD bias 15 and this one has a huge impact on how your game looks and would be useful for super low end hardware trying to play this game there's a huge improvement of how it feels looking around we're actually touching 70 fps in some directions although everything has kind of turned to clay for the most part if you'd like you can set this option back to zero and it'll go back to where everything is if you set this option to the negatives it'll keep higher quality models loaded into the distance but obviously you don't really need that setting it to three is a small decrease in quality from zero but may boost your fps setting it to 15 is extreme but that option is available zero is the default and finally if you're really struggling for fps or you're playing on some kind of competitive server where fps means everything open console type in r dot water dot single layer this time just hit space zero and that's it it disables water pretty much entirely it is still there it's just completely invisible obviously you won't want this in most situations as you're just in a floating island and things don't look that good, not to mention it'll probably be less playable, but if you're really needing FPS for a competitive server or something like that, this is a possible option if you're on super, super low-end hardware. The default is one. For the most part, you'll find all of these commands in the description down below. This is pretty much where I'll be playing. I'm getting a solid 60 FPS in most directions, looking at water, a solid 70, which is really good. This is more than playable from a really stuttery, laggy 40 where it was previously. But anyways, that's really about it for this relatively quick optimization guide. It did get super in-depth and obviously this game's optimization will improve into the future as more development is done. But anyways, thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot and I'll see you all next time. Ciao!